Plato's Allegory of the Cave There is no question that Plato's Allegory of the Cave is one of the most famous philosophical concepts in the history of human civilization. As a matter of fact, many filmmakers tried to incorporate this philosophy into their movies. Some of these movies are the famous 1951 Strangers on a Train and the Lego Movie in 2014. But what exactly is Plato's Allegory of the Cave? Why does it appeal to many scholars, including the filmmakers? Let me briefly sketch the key concepts of Plato's Allegory of the Cave and try to relate it to contemporary social realities. First of all, it is important to note that Plato introduced his Allegory of the Cave in Book 7 of his famous work titled, The Republic, which was written around 375 BCE. It is important to note that the Republic is considered to be the centerpiece of Plato's philosophy, which is concerned mainly with how individuals acquire knowledge about beauty, justice, and the good. In relation to this, Plato uses the allegory of the cave as a metaphor of people, the prisoners in this case, chained in the dark to explain how difficult it is to reach, and eventually sustain, a just and intellectual spirit. As we can see, this philosophy continues to be relevant today because we continue to be limited by our perceptions of the around us. In fact, we continue to be blinded by fake news and other unreliable information in social media. This shows that we are as if living in Plato's cave. Now, on the core idea of the allegory of the cave. As is well known, in the allegory of the cave, Plato distinguishes two types of individuals, namely, those who mistake sensory knowledge for the truth, and those who really see the truth. Hence, Plato illustrates that there are three prisoners in the cave who were tied to some rocks with their hands and legs bound. Their heads are also tied so they could not look at anything at their back, but the stone wall in front of them. Plato also wants us to imagine that these prisoners have been in this situation since birth and have never seen anything at their back or outside of the cave. There is also a fire behind the prisoners, and between them is a raised walkway. Then people outside the cave walk along this walkway carrying things on their heads, including plants, animals, stone, and wood. Plato then invites his readers to imagine that they are one of the prisoners in the cave who cannot look at anything beside or behind them, and that they only look at the wall in front of them. And so, when people walk along the walkway, these prisoners see only shadows of the objects that those people carry cast onto the wall. The message that Plato would like to convey at this point is that if the prisoners had never seen the real objects ever before, then they tend to believe that the shadows of the objects cast on the wall were real. So, the prisoners considered the shadows cast on the wall to be real because they know nothing about what is really happening behind them. Plato then introduces a game where the prisoners guess which shadow would appear next, and if one prisoner correctly gets it, then the rest would praise her as clever and believes that she is a master of nature. Then Plato invites his readers to imagine that one prisoner escapes and leaves the cave. Obviously, this prisoner will be shocked at the world she discovers and would not believe it can be real. But eventually, this prisoner will realize that what she saw in the cave were not real, that they have been duped. Here, the prisoner begins to understand her new world and continues with her intellectual journey where she discovers beauty, justice, and meaning. She realizes that her former life and the guessing game they played were useless. Plato then completes the story by telling his readers that the prisoner returns to the cave and informs the other prisoners about what she discovers. But sadly, they don't believe her and even threaten to kill her if she tries to set them free. What Plato would like to show here is that the prisoners, or the people in general, do not only hate, but fear the truth. 
Interpretations of the Allegory of the Cave Countless interpretations of Plato's Allegory of the Cave have been made since Plato's time. Let me just appropriate a few here. Pete Ashley's According to Pete Ashley, Plato's cave is the subjective virtual reality created within the human mind which has been trained since birth by society. The cave is the prison of normal mind, accustomed to society's own dim light projecting images from ego characters onto the interior walls of minds through stories, values, identity, tradition, and the like. The prisoners take these shadow pointers to be the highest truths. A prisoner is unshackled by an accident of grace which loosens the binding to the normal human perspective. Freed from the darkness of conditioned mind, the prisoner is blinded by the one truth of the cosmic perspective, seeing the false virtual reality, which is quite painful to adjust to. Upon returning to the cave, the other ensnared minds cannot comprehend the gibberish of the illuminated mind. The prisoners perceive his attempts to free them as an attack against all that they have built, know, and value. The messengers, Socrates, Jesus, Buddha, are usually killed, driven underground or silenced because of their disorienting, dangerous and disruptive point of view. Abhinav Metas According to Abhinav Mehta, a financial analyst at Goldman Sachs, Plato's allegory of the cave is a perfect analogy to demonstrate that what we observe as the facticity in our lives may be just local or partial truths. I think it is safe to say that Plato was not a sophist. That means that he did not believe in truths to be relativistic. So, going by his perspective, he wants to convey that humanity lives in its own small bubble of beliefs and maybe they are very distant from the truth. But once in a while, a philosopher gets unshackled from these lies, looks around and the underlying truth which was hidden to them dawns upon her. She tries to educate others of the knowledge, but they shun her for being different. They resent her because she is taking them out of their comfort zone of lies they have based their lives on. The philosopher here in the allegory is Socrates, Plato's mentor, who gave up his life trying to free people from untruths. Brian Overland's According to Brian Overland, the biggest point in the allegory of the cave is one that people most often miss. The real reason Plato made up this allegory was to illustrate why it is so often the case that the wise do not rule, that in fact, they are often dismissed by the masses as crazy or even dangerous, as Socrates was. This is because it's so easy to argue against Plato by saying, if the wise man is really so smart, why wouldn't everyone see that and listen to what he says? Or to put it another way, why would Athens condemn Socrates to death? Plato's answer is obvious, as can be gleaned from the allegory of the cave, because true wisdom, to the foolish, seems all too often like madness. This is indeed the real point of the allegory of the cave. Most men are like people trapped in a cave, forever facing the wall, believing the shadows on the wall of the cave to be real. When one of their number breaks free, emerges into the light, and then returns to announce that there is a whole other world outside the cave, he is usually dismissed as a madman. Because most men, to Plato, are trapped in ignorance, seeing only shadows on the wall and believing what they see to be reality, not knowing that there is a much greater reality outside of their limited experience and knowledge, 